name is Sam Fall, and I'm here at CNSE, College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering in Albany, New York. And uh, I'm going to be showing you about the wire bonding of this machine. Some other things uh, that can be useful to know is, number one, uh, at the edge of a chip, so when you're putting your bond from what point to point, don't contact the edge of the chip. Uh, if you contact the silicon, then that can actually cause a short and bad results and all that bad stuff. So you want to avoid the wire contacting that, that edge. Um, another really good, uh, good tip for when you are bonding to your second path, so you bond first, then you go up, you bond second, and something goes wrong and it's laying across the patient, particularly right here. And you want to get it to, to bounce up. It's not doing it. So what do you do? Well, one thing you can try to do, it's pretty, pretty easy, so I usually try and do it first, is you take your tip and you come down on the bond again. Now you want to come down on it at just the right place. So for instance, if your bond is like this, if your bond is like this, you want your tip to be about right like that. You want your tip to be like this. That way when you come down, There'll be just enough fulcrum here that can actually cause the wire to pop up a little bit. That can sometimes give you really good results, maybe 50-50, 50% uh, of the time it doesn't do anything. Um, but it's really easy and generally doesn't cause any damage, so you can try that. Um, else. Uh, oh, when you come down and something goes wrong anyways, and you try and feed wire out again and it gets stuck. So one of the things that uh, you're going to find is that why the, uh, the tip can get stuck, clogged up, and you have to wind up pulling the wire out because the, uh, it won't feed this way anymore. So one thing you can do when when that happens, it's easier than rethreading all the time, and it some, sometimes works. Maybe again about 50% of the time um, is you move, feed the wire forward, and if it's stuck, it's going to form an arc, a bend, and you take your tweezers and you just very very lightly push down on that and your hand will shake enough to rattle it rattle that around and sometimes that can be enough to push the clog out and, and you don't have to re-thread the whole the, the whole needle. Um, in addition uh, you're going to have times when the needle gets completely clogged and I have been able to unsuccessfully unclog needles. What you do is you take the needle out, a little wrench by the way, this is the wrench right here, that releases the Allen screw right in the front there of that arm. You have an Allen screw right there that holds the needle in place. You unscrew that, the needle comes down, and you then turn the needle around and hold it back up under the microscope and you can see the tip and you can also see the clog. Sometimes uh, just scraping on the outside like that can uh, remove the uh, clog enough that you know, it just kind of falls off. It's actually not in there very hard. So sometimes just scraping like that. Other times what you need to do is get a piece of this wire. So you get a piece of this wire, 
mold like that. Take a piece and you snap it off so that we have just barely something sticking out from, from under your tweezers there. Uh, just barely. So the shorter, the better. Then take your needle and kind of like this, push up. And you actually that you use that piece of short piece of wire as a probe to push the jam out. Uh, and that I, has been fairly successful at about like uh, ten needles are clogged in the drawer, you know, like third night. So that's pretty successful. And you can also use old uh, discarded needles that have broken tips or something like that as tools to also help clean the tips of needles. Oh, um, back to the way I did it was I took the needle out and I stuck it in here. So you just kind of open that, slide the chip back, and use the, this as a clamp, like that. And it will put it in between this groove right here, right there. And that actually gives you a clamp that then you can stick under here and then work on it. So, oh, I wanted to show you about this. Um, this is the plug. This moves this whole this whole thing in and out. That's your focus. Uh, this is your zoom. Zoom in, zoom out. Yeah, that's zoom in, zoom out. Um, if you your eyes are closer together and further apart, be comfortable. You can just push these things, and they just move. So you can get adjusted to whatever is comfortable for you. And if you need to adjust the whole thing, you basically just pull it like that and bend it. So it's that, and then you twist it, turn it, whatever the axis looks like. Like that, and then this one is like that. That's about it. But, uh, that way you can on your, get eyes on you. Okay. So I think that takes care of everything. Uh, oh, and if they didn't tell you this, you unplug down there. Do not use the switch here. Uh, for the lights, the lights, they just use the black one. Just pull that plug, turn that off, power, and reverse to turn on. Alright, hope this helps.